Let me ask Gordon Chang. He's a columnist at the Daily Beast and author of Nuclear Showdown. Uh, welcome back, Gordon. Uh, there is so much to talk about here because the story keeps going and going and going with more tests. And now, uh, apparently, North Korea has a bomb that's eight times more powerful than the one dropped on Hiroshima. What should we do now? Well, I think what we do is we go after North Korea's sponsors, Russia, but more important, China. And China right now is vulnerable. You know, their biggest banks, Bank of China, for instance, named in a 2016 UN report for devising and operating a money laundering scheme, that's a violation of our Patriot Act. What we could do is declare it a primary money laundering concern, and that would deny it access to dollars. Without dollars, it's not doing business outside of China. It's also not doing a lot of business inside China. It's a death sentence. You know, and, it's, and Bank of China, as big as it is, like the fourth biggest bank in the world by assets, is not the biggest Chinese bank that has been money laundering. So you, this gives President Trump a really important point of leverage on the Chinese because he said, look, I can take your financial system down. If I take your financial system down, so goes your economy. If your economy goes down, there's probably no more political system with the Communist Party in it. And so this is a way to do this. Now, I'm not saying 100% it's going to work, but I'm also saying that war is catastrophic. And we have it a. It is catastrophic. And we're talking about millions of people who could die in Seoul and in North Korea and in Japan and in Guam and eventually the Western United States. That is not an option. So we have to talk about these unorthodox methods and we also have to look at because you know we have this real black and white way of seeing the world as though China were just one thing North Korea is just one thing but there are those networks there are banks there are ways that obviously North Korea is getting materials it needs to build nuclear devices it's getting missiles it, it's getting uh, nuclear and military reinforcements that's coming from somewhere and the somewhere is not necessarily the state actors but these these tunnels if you will these networks Networks. Well, you know, there are a lot of Chinese companies that have been supplying things like uranium hexafluoride, which is semi-processed fissile material for their nuclear weapons program. We know that the, the transporter erectors, those big vehicles that bring North Korea's most important missiles to the launch sites, those are Chinese. And so, you know, that means that the Chinese military is behind this. And so we've got to go after not only these entities that have been supplying North Korea with all this stuff, but of course, all the range of support that North Korea is getting from the Chinese, yeah. from the Russians, and from others. We can do this. You know, John Bolton, during the administration of George W. Bush, had his proliferation security initiative. We need to reinvigorate that because we know the North Koreans sell this stuff to the Iranians, to the Syrians. Each year, it's estimated that Iran pays North Korea somewhere between 2 and $3 billion for their various forms of cooperation, which are missiles and also uh, nuclear weapons tech. So this is important for us to do. It's like the most important thing for us to do. No, it it really is. And I think there are a number of ways of putting pressure here because, uh, you know, as I said, China doesn't want a war. And if they do a cost benefit analysis, if they look at the economic impact uh, of, of sanctions and some of these, uh, these punishments that we could put in place on them versus an all out war, uh, because I, I understand China doesn't want to see a reunified no. Korean Peninsula with Seoul at the helm, which is, of course, an ally to the United States. But what is worse for China? That or, you know, having literally North Korea fall apart and, and millions pouring over their border? Yeah, long term, North Korea hurts China more than anything else. But in the short term, China gets a lot of benefit because every time North Korea does something belligerent, you know, fire off a missile, you know, we go to Beijing, we plead for their cooperation. We shouldn't be pleading for cooperation. We should be coercing them into cooperation. You know, we ran a goods and services trade deficit with China last year of $309.3 billion, according to the most recently revised figures. Well, that means we don't worry about trade friction because we're the trade deficit country. Also, we've got a much larger economy than China's, which means we can push them around. Our economy's not geared to selling things to China, but China's geared to selling things to us. And at the top of this, we've got a stable economy. China has one which is heading to a debt crisis. That's absolutely right. It's, it's very volatile. And uh, I, I think there are more people involved in these uh, diplomatic discussions who have to acknowledge that China is in a pickle. 
that we've got them cornered right now, and there's no reason that we should be the ones spearheading a war where it's going to cost American lives, not to mention yeah. the millions of lives of those in the region. Yeah, and China can actually solve this because, you know, China accounts for like 90% of North Korea's trade. More than 90% of its oil is supplied for China, much of it on concessionary terms. But the most important thing that China supplies is confidence to regime elements. I'm not sure that Beijing could ever convince Kim Jong-un to give up his nukes, but what Beijing can do is those people who are around Kim that keep the regime together, China can signal to them that it no longer supports the yeah, nuclear weapons that, program. Yeah, and that they are safe because they're terrified. And yeah. China's appeasing a bully, and the bully is um, threatening to murder anyone who rises up against it. Gordon Chang, thank you so much.